would be some non-negotiable um, objective and, and I guess from a planning perspective um, that uh, yeah, really important for a successful return to performance, do you think? Yeah. Uh, so when, when planning a rehab, I'll probably the principles that I, and, and, and again, it's sort of, we employ it at Melbourne that I've um, taken a lot from all of um, my colleagues there, I suppose, is um, the things that I think will set you up successfully is um, probably a handful of things, but early loading. So the tissue that's injured um, specifically, I think should get some load into it. Now that's again, dependent on what the tissue is. Um, obviously uh, bone may need some immobilization or, or non-weight bearing, but you still then want to get some load in when allowed to. Ligament, you're wanting it to get as stiff as possible rather than pliable, like a tendon or a muscle. So again, you're trying to probably immobilize that a bit more. But again, at some point in time, whenever early is appropriate, you want to get some load into that tissue. Muscle and tendon is a bit different. You want some pliability as well as some um, integrity. So again, you're wanting to load that quite early. But all of these um, tissues, I believe that the load going through it is where you know the mechanotransduction occurs and actually causes that that healing, which we can't quite assess. Your favourite ways to um, self develop yourself. You've mentioned uh, and throughout the whole podcast how you, know, how you curious and you love to ask questions from your colleagues. So clearly that's something that you really value, um, asking a lot of questions. Are there some uh, other methods that you've found helpful along the way, whether it be podcasts, uh, re research articles, uh, calling yeah. other colleagues outside of different sports? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, what you touched on would probably be what I'd have as, as the number one, like using your colleagues around you, um, whatever environment you're in, um, I'd be putting a sure bet that there'd be someone, there'd be people around you that you can learn from. Um, and probably sometimes um, could even be annoying for my colleagues as people I've worked with, but I like to ask them lots of questions, even yourself, Jack, when we're chewing the fat in the weight room um, on, of an afternoon. Uh, I think that that's probably how I've developed my knowledge the most. Mm -hmm. um, but a, another sort of thing, potentially a little bit um, different to, to the reading of the podcast is I think that what's really important is reflective practice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we, we banged on about that um, at university, you get taught that at undergraduate and you do lots of exercises and write essays on reflective practice. And you probably sort of ignored it if you were anything like me and thought that, you know, um, it's not that important, but I think it definitely is. I, I um, still now, like when I'm driving home, um, just even a mental note it doesn't have to be a notebook. Uh, it doesn't have to be written down, but um, taking note of what went well and what didn't. And, and then even across an injury, um, you know, across say the last season, I could, I can remember cases of, of injuries and sort of, I could give you what I took from that in a good or a bad perspective. And just mm -hmm. having that check-in point with yourself of um, why things actually worked or did about from a, a challenge point of view or, or moments throughout your professional career where yeah, you've been uh, in a challenging situation, but ultimately you've worked through it and, and learned something from it. What would be the challenge? And then what did you learn? Um, I mean, rather, I mean, it's not necessarily a, a specific situation, but um, the challenge of working within a team in elite sport, I touched on like the, Collaborating is one of the best things, but it also can be one of the most difficult things because there's so many different opinions and inputs. Everyone's yep. trying to achieve the same thing, but you, there's also an element of a little bit of slice of the pie and be heard and I want my opinion to be taken seriously. So the challenge of that is enormous. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that um, how you can um, sort of, I think, maximise that is sort of enter those discussions with a bit of humility, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I think that, um, you know, what pops from actually a podcast um, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, what was his name? Adam Grant, a psychologist, um, was talking about um, disagreements and working within a team. And he said that like the best uh, leaders uh, have a, a high that balance of confidence and humility. From business point of view, no doubt there'll be some business owners listening in. Um, you also run a business, enhance sports physiotherapy. Um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about what it's all about uh, and your role and how you balance that with your role also at the Melbourne Footy Club? Uh, yeah, sure, mate. I um, I started it with my 
uh, best mate from uni, um, David Faye, he's an exceptional physio um, that's had, you know, different experience in sport himself. Um, and he's an exceptional business mind as well. So we sort of work well together. We set up um, this clinic that we've, we run very much part-time um, involved with uh, sort of around our other work. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I've touched on it, but in terms of the challenge of running a business is really rewarding, but also just the clinical exposure that Dave and I get, you know, we've developed a little bit of a brand of sort of sporting clientele linked to um, local sporting clubs and surgeons and doctors sending us sort of the sporting and active population. So the people that we're getting um, through the door are people who are motivated and athletes that we really enjoy working with. So, you know, I have the ability to come here. I, I balance it. I do two evenings a week around my football club commitments and I might come in and see, uh, you know, seven to 10 in a night or could be five depending, but that, that pure number that you're seeing of active sporting population is just growing your experience. So from a rehab perspective, uh, I know you're big on your processes and, and planning. Um, can you touch on the, on why this is so important to you from a rehabilitation point of view? Yeah, sure, mate. Um, I, I think that, um, like, yeah, as you said, like, I, you know, having a sound process, robust process within the team is so important. Um, I think that it, it just, it, well, the first and foremost is that I think it provide it sets the athlete up um, with the highest chance of success. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just across my career, um, you know, the processes can adapt, but having a, a sound sort of um, uh you know, almost a flow chart of how you um, plan and conduct your rehab um, is going is to um, educate the athlete um, on the starting point and their end point. It's going to give them um, a really clear understanding of what they need to do to achieve that. Um, I think that, you know, if you talk to 10 different um, people on your podcast, you'll see that people might do, you know, things slightly differently, you know, different exercises, um, different prescription, different running loads, but they all seem to have had success. And lots of these people, um, you know, have good outcomes when it comes to rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. I think that that, to me, highlights the point that the actual nuance, nuances of the prescription, while it is important to make sure that it is um, sound, is actually the differences show that it, the process is the, the major point, I think, that um, is, is what causes the success in the, in the first place. Um, you know, I think that this, it's probably supported by most of um, the research that I'm aware of, you know, objective criteria based rehab that we've yeah. sort of shifted towards. Um, it's nothing new, um, that, you know, I, that practitioners are using, but um, it just sort of, I think, can have a really positive impact on the, on the timeline that people return. Um, you know, as I spoke about Selwyn Griffiths, our performance manager, um, he will often talk about that players need to earn the right to, mm -hmm. to do X, Y, or Z. 